Eight more days till Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Eight more days till Halloween, silver. Shamrock. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch stars Tom Atkins, Stacey Nelkin, and is directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. So at the end of Halloween 2, Michael Myers explodes in a fire. And so we all pretty much thought, okay, he's pretty much gone, he's dead. And then, I believe it was a year later, they came out with Halloween 3. And I remember in the marketing campaign that they didn't really advertise it as something other than a Michael Myers movie. They didn't really tell you that he wasn't in it. So a lot of people were pretty pissed off, uh, including myself. And I remember when I first watched this movie, I thought Michael Myers was going to be in it. And about 20, 30 minutes in, I was like, okay, something's off here. Michael Myers is nowhere to be found. And I, I remember I was really let down by that. A lot of people were let down. And because of that, I hated this movie for quite a long time. So Halloween 3 starts out with this old man and he's running down the street and he's gripping onto this mask and he shows up at the hospital. And Tom Atkins takes him in and he tells him, hey, what's going on, man? Everything's going to be okay. We got this. And the guy basically says, they're coming. So then later in the night, the dude's laying in the bed and then all of a sudden, these men in suits show up and one of them takes his two fingers, sticks it right in his eye sockets and yanks his skull up out of his head. So obviously everybody in the hospital is like, what the hell just happened? So the old man's daughter shows up, played by Stacy Nelkin. She gets with Tom Atkins and they go to this town called Santa Maria and they try to figure out what the hell is going on. And as soon as they arrive in Santa Maria, you see that something is really off about this town. It's a very small town and everybody seems afraid and they're all kind of hiding. They won't come out and, and you get this feeling like strangers are not welcome. So then later we meet Colonel Cochran and he is a toy maker. And this factory pretty much runs the whole town. And you see all these surveillance cameras around. And so Tom Atkins and Stacey Nelkin's characters are left to find out what the hell is going on. And what's up with this toy factory and... And why does Colonel Cochran have such a hold on all these people? And in the end, Colonel Cochran wants to pretty much kill every child on the planet Earth. Like I stated earlier, I didn't really like Halloween 3 when it first came out, and a lot of other people didn't like Halloween 3. But it's actually grown into one of my favorite Halloween movies, and it's one of the entries in the franchise that I watch yearly. It's a great Halloween movie. Halloween being the holiday. Let me tell you what I liked about it. First of all, Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins uh, is kind of the scream king, if you will. He's in a lot of early 80s classics like The Fog, Escape from New York, and Night of the Creeps. To me, he's kind of the Han Solo of the horror genre. He's, he's got this big, thick mustache, and he's just so cool. And he's not the greatest looking guy in the world, but he's just really cool. And he's got this swagger to him. And a lot of people jokingly see Tom Atkins as a lady killer because he's... He's been on the screen with Jamie Lee Curtis in The Fog. He's got Stacey Nelkin in Halloween 3. And all these girls seem to just swoon over him. And we, as the viewers, have a lot of fun with that. And he's also a good actor. Another thing I liked about this movie is Colonel Cochran, the, the villain of the movie. He's got a very calm demeanor. He never raises his voice or screams at anybody. He's totally in control. And he is batshit crazy. He barely even gives a reason as to why he wants to kill every kid on the planet Earth. He's kind of the evil Donald Pleasance of this Halloween entry. Another thing I really love about Halloween 3 is the score. The score is almost as good as the score in the original Halloween. But overall, it's a score all its own. It kind of got a little bit of a Terminator vibe to it, but it's really effective and it's very pulse pounding. I actually have the soundtrack to Halloween 3. That's how good of a score this is. And also, I love the eerie feeling you get from watching Halloween 3. It, you can kind of tell early on that it's probably not going to end well. There's, there's a, a great sense of dread throughout the whole movie. And that's because of the cinematography by Dean Cundey. I'm really glad Dean Cundey came back after Halloween 1 and 2 because... The guy's a legend in Hollywood. His cinematography is just glorious. 
he's so good that he can make a bad movie watchable. And then finally, I love the ending of Halloween 3. I won't give it away, but it's very effective and it grabs you right into the credits. Like I said earlier, guys, I love Halloween 3, and I think the only bad thing I can say about it is that they actually used the Halloween name in the movie. They should have just called it Season of the Witch. If they would have done that, it might have done better, but it, it still has found its audience because it is a good movie. So if you're new to the Halloween franchise and you've never seen Halloween 3, I would set it aside, watch all the other entries, and then come back and watch Halloween 3. Or just watch Halloween 3 and don't worry about the other entries until later. I think you'll enjoy it a lot more that way. Overall, I'd give Halloween 3 a purchase worthy. It's one of my favorites in the series. I'm going to watch it every year. And, oh, don't forget about the big giveaway at night. Guys, thanks for watching. Only two more Halloween movies to go, and then the Halloween series reviews will be finally wrapped up. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and rum dum out.